Then uh, the other uh, talk uh, will be f from Eshen Wong, from, uh, which is actually from Shanghai Yao Tong uh, University, and uh, he's actually working from more a uh, more uh, um, uh, engineering oriented uh, um, ro robotics uh, standpoint, uh, and uh, of course he's an author of many research papers. Uh, um, and uh, is an editor of RAS um, conference editorial board, uh, and actually is, um, we don't see it, but he is the program chair of Robio uh, Robotics and Biology. Uh, Robio, one of the leading conferences robotics oriented to bioinspiration in 2014. So, if uh, Sheng, uh, Professor Wang is ready, we can move to Shanghai. We will move to Shanghai for the next uh, to the next talk, which actually will be on the other side of the spectrum. Uh, so not as uh, low in spectrum as uh, talking about uh, materials uh, as Matteo, uh, uh, Professor Gianchetti did uh, last week, but uh, it's uh, close to the problem of uh, how to manage and control a soft actuator, which is still a problem uh, in, in this huge um, research program which should lead to some uh, substantially better robot uh, in, well, Kevin say two decades, say ten to two decades, maybe something before and something later okay um, Professor Wang, the floor is yours okay, thank you Fabio, uh, thanks for your introduction and uh, hello everyone, I'm Hussein Wang from Shanghai Jiao Tong University uh, today my topic is uh, video theorem control of carbon-driven soft uh, robot manipulator. Uh, this, today the content is mainly based on the IRO, uh, IRO's paper I just presented uh, a few weeks ago in Tokyo. So uh, the content is mainly focused on two parts. The first part I will tell something about the design of this soft uh, robot manipulator. Then in the second part, uh, we will design a vision-based controller to control this soft robot. Uh, here is the outline. Uh, <coughs> so the background, uh, this research topic comes from uh, a medical uh, joint project with a medical doctor uh, who is uh, in the Shanghai chest, uh, chest uh, hospital. We are trying to design a surgery robot uh, to prefer to perform some uh, surgery task uh, for the for the human heart, so uh, the main purpose is uh, to for the minimal inverse surgery. So we try to design a robot that is not very big and it can inside the human body with a very small hole. So uh, in our this uh, research topic, we mainly focus on the. Surf, uh, the surface of the beating heart. So we don't stop the beating of this uh, uh, human heart. So actually, uh, there already exist a few of robots for this kind of task, such as uh, the hub or in the CMU and the concentrate tube robot from the Columbia University. So uh, the common sense for these two robots is that they are all made by the rigid uh, body, so it's sometimes if you, uh, this robot contact with the human heart, it's very, uh, very dangerous for the human. And also, uh, there's another type of uh, the robot, is called the heart lander. They use uh, two uh, sacral sections, so by, by moving these uh, this two sections, so they can move behind this robot. So uh, for this, these three kind of robot, uh, for the common things is that they are not uh, soft enough for the first two kind of these robots, so it's not safe enough. And uh, for the second uh, robot, since they use uh, sucker to stay on the surface of the beating heart, uh, for the human, uh, the, they have a lot of blood or some liquid, so may uh, limit the application of this kind of uh, sucker. So it's not very practical enough. So uh, inspired uh, by the nature of the soft uh, system, uh, like this 
this uh, this kind of animal list uh, on the figure, uh, such as the octopus, the elephant trunk, the snail, and uh, the tones of the animal and the starfish, and so on. So we learn this uh, soft rope, soft system. They are uh, very conform to the surroundings and they refit to the dynamic environment. So uh, <coughs> and uh, there's uh, already a lot of soft robot exist in the world. So uh, for the soft robot, it's a combination of the material manufacturing, control, computer simulation, and also in the Shanghai lecture we have a lot of. Uh, series lecture about the soft robot. Uh, they can be, be applied to a, a lot of things such as uh, minimum inventory uh, and uh, military exploration rescue and so many tasks. And here is uh, a, a few soft robot already designed in the world and especially the octopus. Uh, is, there is a huge uh, project uh, in European about the octopus. So uh, we summarize the characters of the soft robot, uh, robot compared to the rigid robot and the other kind of uh, redundant robot and the continuous robot. We find that for the soft robot, we have a lot of advantage, such as they have the infinity degree of freedom, it has the very high material strength, and it's very safe. Also, uh, it's uh, comp compatibility with the obstacle is very good. But also we have uh, several limitations, such as the accuracy, the controllability, and the positioning. So that's why we may require some control technology to control this soft robot so that they can perform some more accuracy task, more accurate tasks. And then based on the uh, outer purse, so we try to design this uh, soft robot manipulator uh, for the surgery. So this is uh, our system we designed in our lab. Uh, this system mainly composed three parts. We have the soft manipulator here. And also we have the, the general base frame here. And also we have the control system with uh, laptop. So for the soft manipulator, we designed with uh, 30 millimeters long, and also the diameter on the top is only one millimeters. And so we put an uh, under scope in the middle of this robot so that they can provide the wage information for the doctor. And also we will put several surgery instruments inside of this, inside this hole so that they can perform some uh, surgery task. And also the, the body himself is made by the silicon rubber. And also we have several cables inside this robot. So this robot can be driven by this cable. And for the system base, we have a <coughs> totally 10 degree of freedom, and we have a different view to drive the different cable so that the robot can perform different uh, motion. And also, we have the linear motion so that they can push ahead and back for, for this manipulator. And also, we have the uh, rotational a mechanism so that this robot can be rotated. And also, for the control and the display system, we have the vision feedback information and we have the control panel. And also, we can use the joystick to control the motion of this uh, robot. So, here is uh, our uh, manipulate method. We have two modes one is the manual mode. So in this manual mode, uh, this carbon can be changed by resetting some uh, function on the on the panel uh, on the control panel, and also we have some uh, buttons on the joystick so that we can control the different uh, motion for this robot. And in the automatic mode, 
we will apply some control algorithms so they can perform some like uh, path planning and uh, the uh, motion control. So uh, <coughs> here, first uh, we imply some behavior and uh, to control this uh, robot so they can perform some uh, typical uh, motion like bending, contracting, and so on. Uh, so for the first video, uh, the video file, so nothing you can play this video. So uh, we can find a few of the behavior. We can see that uh, this robot can perform some uh, action and they can have an ice curve. Actually, this kind of uh, because for, uh, it's very important for some surgery, they, they need to uh, avoid some muscle and uh, to reach like to the back part of the human heart. And also, uh, <coughs> here we also did a, a few uh, experiments, but this is only the model of the human heart. Uh, we have a, a, a model and this heart can uh, simulates the human beating and we uh, try to use uh, this robot to, to, to check uh, whether they can reach some particular uh, place uh, in, the, in the heart. So, uh, Nathan, can you play the video one? So uh, in this movie, we can, uh, of, uh, we can see that uh, this uh, robots are trying to reach some location and to across some obstacle. And also, we did some experiment uh, with uh, limit environment. So we use uh, a few of balloon to simulate the human tissue. And so we uh, use the camera to guide the robot to go to a particular uh, place. So Nathan, can you play the video too? So the, uh, we, uh, we cite a uh, detailed position in the image plan and the, uh, the, the robot will try to reach that uh, particular position. And also the video three. So we simulate that this robot they have to uh, perform a ice curve uh, motion. And also the video fall. So in the video fall, we use uh, two. Uh, Nathan, can you play the video fall? So in this uh, video, we try to simulate two soft uh, robot arm. We manipulate one <coughs> object. So now that I think uh, that's enough. So uh, that's uh, basically the robot arm we have designed in our lab. So uh, there's uh, a few issue if you want to automatically uh, control this arm. Uh, one important thing is you have to modding this uh, robot. Of course, uh, you can use some uh, control algorithm or some uh, without this modding. But uh, but however, we are trying to do with use traditional method. So first uh, we will model 
this robot arm. So uh, basically, we have two we have two methods. One is that you can use the kinematic based method. So you have to have the kinematic modeling of this system, and also you can have to if you try to consider the dynamic effects. So dynamic modeling is also very important, and then you have to design the controller. So uh, in this part, I will first talk about uh, the kinematic based uh, model. So to model, first to model this uh, soft robot arm, uh, we use the constant, uh, constant curvature uh, hypothesis. So in this hypothesis, we assume that uh, this, all this, this soft robot, the whole body can have, we can divide this with the N segment. For each segment, we assume that they have the same, the radius of this section is the same. So uh, if the n is big enough, so you can this uh, assumption will approach to the real uh, situation. So uh, in order to derive the kinematics of this soft robot, we first uh, define a three space and two mapping first, uh, because for the robot we have to uh, translate from the variable, the state variable, to the position of the under factor. So we first define the state variable as the length variable of the cable. Since uh, this is cable, uh, cable driven robot, we have we don't have the joint uh, of the the link. So of <coughs> so we uh, first design a length variable of this cable. Then we transform to the virtual joint variables. Then finally uh, change to the position and orientation, uh, orientation of this and the factor. So we define a, a few variables and uh, the <coughs> actually I will uh, skip of the, the where it is the duration only give the idea. So uh, for each part we have four cable to drive this and then we define since we are we can measure how long this cable have been driven uh, by the, uh, and the uh, encoder, then we divide this length to the n part. So for each part, we can know the different lengths. Then we can calculate the central length of this cable as this figure. Then by some mathematic and uh, derivation, we can find a relationship between the cable, the length of this cable to the virtual variables we define. And finally, we can transform to the the, uh, the under effect predictions by this equation. So I, uh, the detailed duration you can find in my IRS paper. So I will skip uh, to this part. So next step, uh, we'll try to derive the kinematics for the camera. So suppose we have a 3D point in the world, we will project to the image plan. So this is uh, perspective proje uh, projection. Uh, it's uh, well known in the computer vision. Uh, we have the, the 3D point. We we'll use the camera projection model. We can project to the image plan. So, and then uh, this is the simplified projection model. And here is our system. So we have the camera actually inside this robot. And we have a base frame here. So by the kinematics we have derived, so we can find the relationship between the base frame and the, the under effect frame. And we have a, a feature point here. So this feature point we project to the inside of the image plan by this equation. And also there's important thing is the depth information. Since we use only one camera, so the depth, the depth is very important. So actually, they can calculate by this equation. Of course, uh, they have several things that we are not, we, we don't know. And by differential this projection equation, we can find the relationship between the velocity, the robot velocity space to the image velocity space and also, this is well-known uh, image Jacobin here. 
So this is the mapping between these two velocity space. And this is we defined as the image Jacobian. And we know that we have the depth here is uh, time variable. So it will change at time uh, according to the, the different position. So the depth will change. And we find that this, this part we define as the depth independent image Jacobian in one of our TRO paper. And we find that one property of this matrix is that they can limit if you time any vectors which this matrix, we can linearize this matrix with the parameters. Then next step we will define we will design the controller. So as I mentioned that for the controller design, basically we have two reports. One is kinematic space, one is another is dynamic space. So for the kinematic space uh, with the serving, basically we have two loop for the inner loop. So the robot controller will calculate. You just need to give the desired joint velocity, then the robot controller will calculate the relative job talk to the robot so they can perform the velocity based loop. Then for the the outer loop, so what we need to do is only calculate the velocity you want this robot to achieve. And for the dynamic video serving, usually we just use only one loop. So this controller we, uh, we designed should be uh, talk related. So we did uh, directly we design a talk, then input this robot, so this robot can perform the motion. So here, first uh, we use the kinematic based method. We design this uh, controller, and here is a, a controller we design. And uh, basically, the joint velocity we design, uh, including two parts. The first part is uh, here, data y is the image arrow. So we fade back this image arrow, which the image Jacobi. We notice that we don't use the depth here. So we fade back this to the joint space. And since we don't use depth in the first part, so we use uh, another, another compensate term in the second part. So they can compensate the depth uh, we ignored in this part. And then since for this robot, we don't know where this 3D feature point is, so we use the adaptive law to estimate the 3D position of these features. And then uh, we use the Lyapunov approach to approve the stability of this controller. So uh, basically, we design a Lyapunov function like this. So uh, we notice that this is not actually a Lyapunov function. Uh, so we call this uh, it's a Lyapunov flag since it's only including partial of this system state. And <coughs> by uh, Babla's lemma, I will also uh, skip all the detail proof. We can prove that we can uh, make this image error convert to zero. So, and then we do some experiment. So in this ex experiment, we can see that we have a desired point here, and we have the initial point. Our purpose is that to drive this soft robot so that in the image plan, the desired, the, the initial image feature point, we convert to the desired one. And here's the experiment way. So Nathan, can you play the movie file? So we can see uh, that uh, the green circle means that it's the uh, current prediction of the feature point in the image plan, and the red circle means it's the uh, desired one. And uh, as we can see, that this. And here, the which is the only feedback. And this. Uh, 
this uh, current position will approach to the red circle, and uh, later on, we will give some disturbance. We can see that we uh, imply some disturbance, and then this controller can uh, converge quickly to the uh, desired position again. Okay, so and here I uh, illustrate some figures. Uh, the first figure mean uh, we plot uh, the whole trajectory on the image plot. This is uh, how this uh, cur uh, the, the position of the point converge to the desired position. And in the second uh, image, uh, we show the image error. We can see that this converge to the uh, desired one. So finally, I will conclude my work is that uh, first uh, we design a carbon-driven soft robot manipulator, and then uh, we imply some behavior-based method to test uh, the behavior of this robot. Then we derive the kinematic model of this robot, and uh, we design adaptive controller, and also we do some uh, experiment to test uh, the performance of this controller. So the future work including uh, considering dynamic uh, effect and also what we are doing is that to control this robot in a more uh, constrained environment. So because during the surgery, so there's a lot of human tissue around. So this, we will put uh, 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 other sensors in, uh, on the top of this robot manipulators so that they can perform more complicated uh, tasks. And uh, okay, so finally I will make a, a, a test advertisement. Uh, this is uh, the call for paper for the next uh, IE Robio conference which will hold in Vietnam, Hoi Nai, uh, the capital city of Vietnam. and. Uh, I'm the program chair of this conference, and uh, uh, the submission deadline is uh, early July. So, if you're interested, uh, please consider submitting the paper. So, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I I think there are questions maybe of different nature uh, from the previous uh, lecture question. Do we have any question? So, uh, now I, I may have a comment, uh, which is also kind of, of question. So I also, so I'm, I tend to do, to think many questions. But uh, uh, about uh, um, uh, a, a comment uh, which is also a question, uh, in the actually is uh, primarily to uh, Shang, uh, but uh, could also touch Kevin. Uh, because uh, uh, think to these two talks. In the first talk, uh, we, for instance, we, we, we have this idea about uh, color, no? color as uh, uh, actually a way of interacting of a physical object. Uh. And, and uh, this uh, is a, a very deep, 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 uh, uh, deep thinking. No? And uh, we actually, uh, Kevin is able to predict something uh, important uh, about uh, human perception. And then it comes to how to emerge uh, a notion of space, uh, of a path, uh, no? or some basic idea about uh, presence. And uh, it, it comes out with a two-dimensional world uh, with a very super simple agents, right? Kind of, which is somehow rigid, a rigid, uh, very simple agent. This is the on one side. On the other side, other side, we have a, a Sheng who is actually um, uh, moving from the other part. Of, uh, uh, so he, he implements uh, a fle since uh, there is a need for that in biomedical uh, in, in applications. Mm -hmm implements uh, a, a soft arm uh, in a way which is uh, uh, conceptually different from what um, Kevin does. No? So you, you, 
probably you, 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 uh, your work at Schengen would uh, benefit from having an emerging uh, representation of space uh, or of a, of a tentacle itself, but uh, why you don't do it? I know the answer. Uh, because it's very difficult, no? I don't know if you... So, uh, you and Schengen probably could benefit uh, from approaches like uh, those uh, of Kevin, right? But uh, how far you see it, and uh, how you, you, you think you could benefit from that kind of studies? Because the problem is... So, okay, sorry. So, what's your position, your comments on this comment, if you want? Uh, it's, uh, it's actually, actually, it's very hard to, to, to say that, because uh, it's a uh, very generous question. <laughs> I don't think uh, whether it's... Uh, uh, very suitable for today's uh, topic I, I had just uh, present. But actually, uh, it's uh, how to say what we are trying to do is just uh, imply the, the, the controller to uh, existing or uh, similar uh, bell inspired system, inspired system. And uh, what you mentioned is uh, actually is uh, uh, too generous. Of course, I think uh, maybe we can benefit a lot, such as how you can just uh, control this one without modeling uh, exactly uh, with some other kind of technology or technique so that you can also uh, have the same result. And uh, But you know, how could I benefit? I, I don't know yet. Yeah. So, I don't know if Kevin also wants to comment something or... Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah, so uh, of course uh, the approach that I was trying to put forward in the uh, uh, example of the agent that learns the notion of space uh, is based on the idea that the agent has absolutely no knowledge of the structure of its own body and no knowledge of the structure of space outside of it. And I was trying to suggest an algorithm that would allow the agent to learn that uh, without even knowing a priori that these concepts exist. Uh, this is a very ambitious project huh? and I don't know whether um, it's really useful in practical applications. But of course one could dream that uh, if one had developed the appropriate algorithm, that you would be able to connect it up to the robot that we've just seen in the previous talk, and that by moving around randomly for a while it, and testing the way it's connected to the world, uh, the brain of the robot would be able to understand how it is constructed and, and learn to move itself uh, adequately without making any uh, engineering type model. But you know, that I think is a uh, far away, but that would be the uh, ideal hope. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I agree with you. So, um, I don't know if there are other, other, uh, other questions. So, um, because uh, this, uh, I think, uh, so it's maybe it's in different form of comment that, that I did before. No? So we have a kind of like of uh, different uh, paths, converging paths. Uh, I think it, it, it is worth notice, uh, and it is the reason why I say we are talking about, when we talk about design principle for, for uh, embodied intelligence, we are actually talking about a research program. And uh, um, they are, we, we need to converge from different directions. No? So we have to march. Uh, in different columns to 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 reach the same pro to to reach the same ob objectives because today it would be almost uh, impossible uh, to well, almost impossible never say impossible but uh, very difficult uh, to implement uh, uh, the conceptual approach uh, of, uh, um, of of Kevin uh, to a soft ma uh, manipulator and of course a soft manipulator is something that needs to be developed. And what we see in many, in many research is that you typically you focus on an aspect and you let aside the other one. But I'm pretty sure the, the, the real challenge that we have in front of us is to develop uh, a, a modeling framework which allows to 
to approach uh, this kind of, of soft robotics uh, issues from with a different mod modeling uh, tools, but today we don't have. So it's perfectly logic to to do so the kind of model which have been developed in Shanghai. So if you really want to see something uh, in a few years, uh, something applicable. I don't know if you, Ashang, have something else to say before closing. No, uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, basically, no, thank you. So uh, since we are very late, uh, and actually Kevin already commented uh, on uh, on the brain on the VAT, uh, maybe we can come back on this brain on the VAT because I think that the brain on the VAT example is really very typical to characterize uh, what we are trying to say. You know? So, because the brain on the VAT idea, as actually uh, was pointed out before, is more or less that you can have uh, um, intelligence or even consciousness without having uh, any real. Uh, interaction with exteriors uh, and I think that uh, should emerge from something uh, that we have said today and what we had said before that uh, really it's difficult uh, to to imagine uh, um, to me to, to imagine uh, a, a, a real system completely disconnected and only governed by a computer I mean uh, just uh, b b I, I want to show any any slides, but the idea is that okay, probably you you can uh, build uh, a matrix, but this matrix to, should be uh, comparable in complexity and in uh, um, in subordinateness uh, to use Kevin's words uh, to the real world. So it's another example of, of uh, maybe he'll pose the question. So. Of course, uh, I can imagine of a brain uh, which simulate, uh, s which is uh, connected to a computer, which simulates a sen sensory simulation, stimulation coming from the real world and react to the actuation as the real world. But probably the complexity of this computer should be not so far from that of the real world. So it's a kind of tricky question. So because you could say no, it's not possible. Or you can say yes if your computing system is the universe and the connection are as complicated enough uh, as the as complicated as the real connection that the body has to the exterior. Uh, but uh, it's like saying that it's not possible. No? If you, well, but uh, it's not a real brain in a vat. It's a brain in a universe uh, co in a different universe connected in a very strange way. Maybe, maybe I don't know if. Uh, but we can come back on, on this. I don't know if Kevin wants to elaborate or... Yes, so actually, um, there is a point which is a lot of people uh, um, invoke the notion of complexity to kind of explain emergent behavior like consciousness. And I think that, again, that that, that that's a mistake. Or rather... It leads to confusion because I think it leads you to the belief that there's something magic that's happening suddenly, like a kind of phase transition. You think that, you know, if you get some system that's sufficiently complex, then suddenly it will show a change in its behavior and it will become conscious, you know. Uh, um, I think that that's wrong. I think that consciousness is not something that magically emerges out of some new some new uh, uh, form of organization. I think when we talk about consciousness, all we mean is that we're interacting with the world in a certain way. And there's a whole range of ways of interacting with the world. You know, my refrigerator interacts with the world in a fairly simple way. Um, and I could build it, a machine that gradually interacts more and more in a more and more complex way, but I don't think there's any one magical point where suddenly the complexity goes beyond some phase transition limit and the refrigerator or the robot would become conscious, you know? I think that consciousness is just a word that we use to describe things that we can do, but I think 
like a human baby, for example, um, is probably not conscious the way uh, adults are. And as the child gets older, you know, at, at three years old, it doesn't have a theory of mind, a theory of other people's minds like we adults have. It's conscious in a different way from us. It gradually increases its consciousness. And I think, I think animals, whether or not they're conscious, um, uh, insects, whether or not they're conscious, these are not questions of fact. They're questions of definition. Are we willing to use the word conscious when we describe certain kinds of behavior? Just like the question of whether a virus is alive or a bacterium is alive or a mouse is alive, these are questions of definition. They're not questions of, of, of fact. Okay? Do you see what I mean? Uh, so I, I agree I, with I you see. that... Actually... actually uh, I agree with you what you say that that probably we would not use the word conscious uh, unless the degree of complexity were sufficiently high uh, for us to be willing to use the word but that doesn't mean that consciousness is something that arises in some magical fashion from this complexity complex the the reason we use the word conscious only for complex systems is because that's how we've defined the word it's not because there's something magical that's really happening, starting at some special magical degree of conscious of complexity. Uh, no, very clear. Very Actually, clear. Uh, I was uh, uh, posing the complexity on the word uh, side. So, because we're uh, talking about the brain, the bat. No, so the idea was of, um, that the word has to be in somehow the word outside to which I connect. The brain should be unpredict so should have the characteristics that you uh, expect from the world. Uh, no, this was the idea. I, I, I didn't actually I didn't think about uh, phase transition. Is uh, I was more concerned about uh, embodying the brain, and, and uh, more or less the idea was okay. If your computer program, a simulation program, is complicated enough or has the characteristics of the real universe, then maybe this is possible. I don't know what you think about that. Yes, I agree entirely with what you say, but I think that there's a danger uh, uh, in what you say because people will interpret it by saying, yes, well, there's something magical about embodiment and there's something magical about complexity uh, that is brought by embodiment that somehow generates the consciousness and generates these capacities. And, and I think that's, that's not correct. I think it's just a matter of definition that you could probably build an intelligent machine that had no body, that, just, who, that interacted with its world over the Internet in, by just entirely symbolic manipulation. And it would, have, it would have behavior which you might be willing to call conscious um, in some other sense. It would not be the same kind of consciousness that humans have, because humans have body. Uh, but, but I... I but it, but I, st I still think that, that these questions are ma more matters of definition than matters of fact. Do you see what I mean? No, I, I see. No, I, okay, I see. thank you very much. I think uh, 